The Wizard of Oz is one of the world's most loved movies. Some of the film's biggest stars were its smallest actors, the people who played the munchkins. They've battled awful rumors ever since of orgies and alcohol, now for 50 years. Now, they're taking the offensive and tell their side of it to our Robin Dorian. It was a dream that never lost its charm, a classic that never became cliche, and generation after generation, Dorothy and Toto became household names. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. When Dorothy landed in the Technicolor Fantasyland of Oz, the world was introduced to a new breed of pint-sized people, munchkins. 125 midgets and dwarves brought together from all over the country to play some of the biggest bit parts in history. Today, 50 years later, the only surviving cast members of the 1939 classic are munchkins. Let the joyous news be spread. The wicked old witch at last is dead. Jerry Marin was just an 18-year-old high school student and all of three foot four when he received a telegram from Hollywood, a telegram asking him to participate in what would be an offer of a lifetime. Well, I thought it was interesting, but I thought it was another uh, Metro Golden Mayor musical because they were pretty good at doing musicals. The movie was, of course, The Wizard of Oz. Jerry's part, a member of the Lollipop Guild. Three months later, he boarded a train bound for the Yellow Brick Road. That's where I met the rest of the little people. And before this, I never seen a little person in my life. I mean, isn't that exciting? I mean, when I looked at him, I said, oh, look at that. Holy Toledo. Look at him talk. Look at him dance. Look at him, whatever he does. I was comparing them with me. It was amazing because uh, my eyes almost popped out of my head. I was so excited. <laughs> At three feet and five inches, Margaret Pellegrini thought she was one of a kind. That is, until she moved into Munchkin land. I was to get $50 a week, my room and board, and my transportation. Now, was that considered good pay? Well, for me, I thought it was true because I was, my father was only making $7 a week at that time. So $50 a week, I was rich. <laughs> at the time, we refused The Wizard of Oz with MGM because it was a, like a Disney film. It was everybody with, with beards and covered up. Nobody knows who's playing who. Mickey Carroll had already tap danced his way across America's vaudeville stages when MGM discovered him in 1938. And although he was reluctant to be just another face in the crowd, the experience proved to be his fondest performing memory. But to me, a small part is how you play it and how you feel. To me, it was a big part. I thought I was a star. The Wizard of Oz, I was so happy with it, just to be involved with Judy Garland. Before Mickey became a munchkin, he roomed with a young, struggling actor in Hollywood, a guy named Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the perfect roommate, and he was perfect with everything. He clean, and what a good cook. But during the making of The Wizard of Oz, Mickey Carroll had another celebrity roommate. He stayed at the house of 15-year-old Judy Garland. And although Mickey never saw Judy in her own home, he did often see her in the nurse's quarters on the movie set. Some days she felt good. They gave her downers, uppers. They gave her pills to lose weight for her next picture. This girl had a miserable life. How is Judy Garland on the set? Well, she was only brought in you know, when they were ready for, for her to work. Because she had to be in school for four hours a day. Nels Nelson had never acted a day in his life when he was chosen to become a Munchkin citizen. When you think back on the days of The Wizard of Oz, are they fond memories? Very fond, very fond. You know, I was so glad, glad to be a part of it, but it was, it was unbelievable, you know. Did you feel silly walking around in a little Munchkin suit? No, because everybody else was. So, yeah. <laughs> During the filming of The Wizard of Oz, most of the munchkins stayed together at this hotel. Now, the rumor is that while they were here, they carried on in a less than civilized fashion. And in fact, Judy Garland helped to perpetuate the rumor. In 1967, she went on national television and told Jack Parr 
that the munchkins were just a bunch of two-inch tall drunks who got smashed in their hotel room every single night. As much as I love Judy, when she made that statement on Jack Parr's show, Judy had a couple of belts in her, and she was trying to be funny. And when you're trying to be funny and you don't know what to say, you're going to pick on the little people. Now, I have to ask you about all the rumors that have come out. And the rumors are that all the little people got drunk every night. No, that's no. so that's stupid. <laughs> really, they didn't. Where do you think these rumors came from, then? Well, one or two of them probably got drunk. Maybe the Kellys drank too much. K-E-W-E, you know, the Kellys. But uh, other than that, nobody else. Rumors of sex orgies? Oh, that's a lot of BS. I mean, that makes good copy, you know. <laughs> there were a couple isolated incidents. For instance? Um, for instance, um, there was a pair of twins that, uh, that drank quite a bit. They were named Mike and Ike. Stephen Cox is the author of the book, The Munchkins Remember, and he's considered one of the leading Munchkin authorities. There was a little incident about a, uh, one of the Munchkins got a little jealous about his ex-wife and threatened somebody with a knife. It took nearly seven weeks to produce the 10-minute Munchkin segment. Certainly no small feat. And although the scene is quite famous, none of the Munchkins are. Stephen Cox wants to change this. And, uh, I just thought that for the anniversary of the movie, it's time to uh, expose the Munchkins a little bit. They didn't get any screen credit, so it's about time. We finally got recognized after 50 years. <laughs> no, after everybody else died, you know, I say, well, who's left? 50th year coming up, let's get a hold of somebody. You know, those munchkins, were, the, the, the lollipop guys weren't bad, let's get a hold of him. But some of the little people have made it big. Jerry Marin has used his height to play everything from Buster Brown to the Oscar Meyer man, and he was even elected as a McMayor. Today he still keeps his Hollywood address, he and the little woman, his wife Elizabeth. Together they live in a customized miniature house. And I must admit on my part, it's nice to finally be taller than a movie star. I was happy to be in it because it was it's the motion, motion picture of all time. Everybody asks me, how does it feel to be in The Wizard of Oz? I tell you, to be in a part of, of history. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. It's about time the munchkins can feel big. Now, 